you, 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 I did not do it. I did not say, shut up. Shut up. Okay, okay. This I'm is sorry. where you will be. I'm sorry. I just want you to will not make progress. You will I be stagnant. I did not do it. I said, shut up. <laughs> Maybe I'm not employable, but I don't know. No, Jimmy. You don't joke for such a thing. The child of God doesn't say negative things concerning them. Yeah, I know, but look at it. I've attended all the interviews. I get to the final stage of all the interviews. And, you know, at the end of the day, they give the job to somebody else. So, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Mm. If you keep thinking this way, we'd really have to pray about it. It's probably nothing. But see, I've got another interview again on Friday. So, well, let's keep our fingers crossed. Oh, lest I forget, Uncle Shagun called me and said you should see him. Really? <laughs> am I sure I'm ready to see him? What are you on about? Aren't you the one that wants to get married? <laughs> I know, but... <laughs> It's just the reality of meeting your parents. You, you know, you know, you understand what I'm talking about. I don't know what you mean. When are you coming to see him? Okay. On Friday after the interview. I don't know how my dad is going to take this old wedding thing. I mean, he wouldn't want his 21 year old girl going to a man's house now. At least he will want me to finish my degree. But the good thing is, Uncle Shagum, he's quite lenient, so, and he's agreed to see you. And you're even complaining. Yeah, I'm not complaining. I'm just, you, you understand what I'm talking about now? The whole reality of meeting your parents. Uh, you don't know. Okay, I, I will see him. Um, on Friday. Yeah, Friday after the interview. Mm. All right, I'll tell him that. Sorry, I thought my mom was going to get the door. That's it, yeah, let's go. Fine, thank you. And where's Auntie? She's in the kitchen. Great baby, how are you? I'm fine. How is lectures today? It's very busy, dear lectures. I decided to crash at your place. I can see that. That's fine. Oh, that's, that's absolutely fine by me. What can I get you? Or you want to join me in the kitchen and help yourself out? I think I'll prefer that. Where's my uncle? Oh, he's gone to the Zona Pastor's meeting. Oh, yeah. You look worried. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just want to tell him about Jimmy's visit. Alright. Oh, that's fine. Nice to meet him. Oh, that's alright. Um, Auntie Ruth, can I ask you a question? You can ask me anything. It's about Jimmy and I. What about Jimmy? Is he okay? Yes, it's okay. It's just that we've been having issues about... Have you? Oh, no, 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 auntie. Jimmy has been asking me a lot, and I don't know how much longer I can resist. I understand. It's not something uncommon among girls of your age. But let me show you something. The book of 1 Corinthians, 
chapter 7 from verse 2 to 17 discuss the issue of sex and marriage at length. I do understand the pressure from opposite sex, your friends. Even the media, they are not helping issues. And your whole body system wants to exploit everything. But the word of God says, sex is meant for married couples only. That look on your face tells me that you're not hearing this sermon for the first time, are you? Don't you think I know all this already? I mean, I've kept myself from men up until now. It hasn't been much of a problem. Though it was difficult sometimes, but God has always helped me. Now that I've made a choice to settle down with Jimmy, the pressure is on now more than ever. I do understand, Radike. Probably we have to look at it from another angle. Initially you are dating or you are in courtship and now you are ready to get married. Still the same. God's standard does not change. You have to keep yourself. You have to avoid anything that can lead to sexual immorality. Anything? How do you mean? Yes. Anything that can bring physical contact between the two of you that can lead to sex has to be avoided. I know, Auntie, but it's not easy. It's not. I know it's not easy, but do you want me to tell you what helped me during my own time? I avoided being with him alone in a secluded area. But all the same, you have to wash and pray. Okay, Anton. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just be patient. You idiot. You, you, you think you can get away with that. You foolish. You idiot. You, you think you can get away with that. You, you. That's pretty serious. Since when did you start having this kind of dream? Um, yeah, I remember I had it on the morning of my 15th birthday. Then, yeah, I couldn't tell anyone about it. Then a few months later, my father passed away. So, um, I've had it pretty much all through until I gave my life to Christ in the university. Then it stopped. Then I think about a year ago, it started again. Do you want us to tell Pastor about it? Uh, well, I fasted and prayed. Um, at least, I believe, as believers, Christ has redeemed us through His blood against all principalities and powers. So, I really don't know. So, have you told anyone about it? That's what I'm telling you. Yes, I figure you might have a solution to it. I don't, I don't know. I won't say I know exactly what to do, but we'll pray about it and trust God for victory. Amen. Mm. Wow, well, your problems are fast becoming mine now. What are supposed to mean? Jimmy, my uncle wants to meet you on Friday. Okay. Ah, wait, this Friday? Ah, it's around the corner already. You don't have to go. No, 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 I have to. 
You know I have to make his princess mine. Wait. You know I could call you mine when we get my like a pet name. Mine. Call me whatever you want. Just be my wife. Ma, you still have a long way to go. My dad and everything. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. How are you today? I'm fine, Uncle. This is your friend. Um... Yes, Uncle. His name is Jimmy. He's studying for his master degree in math psychology at the Metropolitan University. Mm. Interesting. Okay, You're welcome. Please sit down. Thank you, sir. How is it going? I mean, your course. I'm fine, sir. Thank God, sir. Um, it's. I think it's it's um, a lot easier studying here than back home. How do you mean? They have better facilities here, better equipment, and that facilitates our learning than back home. Right. Okay. Um, are you a Christian? Yes, sir. Born again? Yes, sir. Actually, I attend the Christian Royal Assembly Church. So do you serve in any way in the church? I assist the protocol department, um, but not all the time because of school. But whenever I'm less busy, uh, whenever I'm not doing anything in school, I just serve in the department. Okay, that's fair enough. Sorry, Uncle, I need to have a girl talk with hands to us. Do you, you like watching football? <laughs> yeah, I'm a Manchester United fan. Ah, nice. But I I just like watching football whenever I can. I'm not really a fan of any any club. A lot, um, no, I forgot yours, but um, I put flower here. It's lovely, I like it. Oh, you get your gifts, they're, 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 in, they're in the house. Um, don't worry, you can give them to me tomorrow. No, we can take it um, immediately after the dinner. Rem uh, just leave there by, remember? I know, but I don't want to be late and get you know. No, don't worry, I'll, you won't. I will ensure you get home safely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You know the results of the exam results? Oh, how was it? Yeah, I didn't pass it. I'm not comfortable with this. I think we need to pray about it. No, it's probably nothing. I'll just retake the course again during the summer. I shall pass it then. But I think we really need to pray about this. Alright. Seems it's more than me. I 
sit down with one. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me go and bring your gifts from inside. Go on, open it. No, I want to save the excitement for later. What excitement are you saving for later? For crying out loud, this, today's Valentine's Day and you're my vow. So go ahead and open the gifts. You're my vow too. All we're supposed to do is exchange gifts and have a good time, which we have done. So, what else? What else? Alright, how about a kiss? Come on, it's just a kiss. What's that? I meant on my lips. No, you mean you're not even supposed to do this. What? What? What's all about for? No, 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 no. I won't accept that. Ah, uh, for the past twelve months, for the past twelve months in this relationship, not one passionate kiss. For what? What's the big deal in the kiss anyway? The big deal is that I'm not ready for it, and it's dangerous. Can lead to something more complicated. We're not ready for. What are we doing that we shouldn't be doing? What complex things? What sex? I'm ready. Me, I'm ready for it. Well, that's you. I'm not. Radike, I've come to see your uncle now, and I think he likes me. So what's the deal? Jimmy, sex is meant to happen between married couples. It's a covenant between a man and a woman who have been joined in holy matrimony. And if we experience it before wedding, it is a sin against God and our own body. The Bible calls it sexual immorality. And I don't want to sin against God. Okay, so the scripture. But even the leaders do it. That is their own business. If they do not fear the Lord enough to hold their bodies, let God be the judge of that. As for me, I'm on the Lord's side. Mm. Then in that case, we need to hasten this whole marriage process then. No, we won't. We'll wait on the Lord for a perfect future together. And um, a piece of advice. Pray to God to give you the grace not to think about it before the wedding day. Why, why are you so difficult at times? Why? I'm not difficult. I only love the Lord with all my heart. And it becomes easy for me to make him talk for everything. Mm, so I'm the one that hates the Lord. Eh? You know you make me feel like an unbeliever at times. You're not a non-believer. You only need to spend more time with God. Love him more. Okay. Are you, are you ready to go? Thank you. How are you? Have you confirmed your ticket yet? Uh, okay. Alright, no problem. I'll pick you up at the airport. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Yeah. yours the 21st floor eh i hope your lift is working it's working it's because working. i don't want you to kill me here it, it's working eh? after putting me in a small taxi it's working. so this is where i live mom hmm. not bad but it's rather plain you should have asked me for money and we could have furnished it to our own standards Mom, there's really nothing bad about this apartment now. Eh? That's why I didn't want to bring you here. I should have just taken you straight to your hotel room. What? What sort of nonsense is this? You're talking to me like that. Because I don't want you to become a peasant. Eh? You are treading the path of mediocrity. Just like your dad. Hmm. Okay, Mom, okay. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. So, um, can I fix you something to eat? And what have you got? Um, I can make you concussion rice. Concur what? So you even want to bring me here and feed me like peasants, eh? Just 
just go and do it anyway. Jimmy, your house is rather dirty. No house helps. Mom, we're in England. We can't afford house help. Okay, just get my rice ready. My flatmate. You didn't tell me you have a flatmate, Jimmy. Oh really? I I thought I mentioned it to you. Oh sorry, I'm, I I must have forgotten. And are you a master student like him? So yes, sir. And what are you studying? Uh, business information systems, sir. Huh? My masters. Very interesting. Actually, the same university. Mm. Great. Let me my concussion. Okay. By the time you eat this food, you won't need to eat at the hotel again. Are you chasing me away? No, I'm not chasing you. I just want you to be comfortable. Right, before I eat this food, Jimmy, I want to talk to you. Can you put your hand down, please? So I can see your face. I'm worried about you. What are you smiling for? I'm worried about you. You were not too young when your father died. And when he was alive, he struggled all his life until he eventually died at the age of 38. Huh? See, Mom, I don't understand why you're bringing this up right now. Just eat your food. Shut up! How dare you talk to me like that? This is what I'm saying. You are like your father in many ways. Your father was a very brilliant scientist. Alegbe was very, very brilliant. But even then, he struggled all his life, the only year that he was about to win a contract of five million naira. He just died, just like that. So I want you to take care of yourself so you don't end up like him. Is that not why you're my mom? Are you not meant to look out for your children? Jimmy, yes, I am your mom. What else do you want me to do? I sent you to the best university in Nigeria. And now you're here doing your masters at my expense. What else do you want me to do? You need to grow up and look after yourself, Jimmy. See, you see, that's, that's the problem with you. You think everything is all about money, 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 money. No, it's not. It's not about money at all, mom. It's not. It's not about money. You need to... Mothers go all the way out to ensure the good future for their children. So what else do you want me to do, Jimmy? I don't know any Babalawa or any other person that can help. Huh? I'm not, see, that, that's where you're getting it wrong. I'm not talking about any Babalawa or any diabolical means. As my mother, you, you are meant to act as an umbrella for, for us. Your, do you even pray at all? Pray. Do, do you pray at all? Pray, did you say? To whom? And for what? If I do no evil to anyone, I don't need to pray. God will take care of me. I'm sorry to say again, Mom, but you are wrong. That's where you're wrong again. You do not have to do evil before evil comes looking at looking for you. I think you are wrong, Jimmy. It's that born again nonsense that is turning your head. If I do no evil, Nemesis will not catch up with me. No. Mom, you need Jesus in your life. You need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He will not only help you with all your children, he will help you also to make eternity with him. Jimmy, <laughs> so you are preaching to me now. Right, that is where the discussion ends. End of discussion.
What an insult. Can you go and warm this concussion for me? It's cold. Steve, hold on. Hey, my guy Jimmy. How are you? Man, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. No bad, I'm alright, Jerry. Um, you're still ready for this exam. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have to for you know, it's very easy to graduate in this country. <laughs> you don't know how much I spent for this course. What, what are I going to do now? It's are you, well, how are you doing? Well. I'm alright, I'm fine. I just came to apologize about um, yesterday, the issue with my mom. Uh, uh, hope, you're, hope you're not offended. No, 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 no. All of us have got moms, and you know what they can be like at times, you know? Maybe just a little bit embarrassed, you know? But I really not a problem. Uh, but, but then, why you try, oh? I don't know, say your mama are terrorists, though. <laughs> eh? hmm? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> oh boy, I fear for your dad though. Eh? <laughs> I think, but you, you look dressed. Are you are you going out? Yes, I'm actually going out. I'm going to um, school to meet my supervisor. Um, I need to finalize some things about my final year project. Before you go, oh boy, don't forget to inform your girlfriend or oh, ah, Don't worry, don't worry. I have that oh boy, tell her, me, I cannot <laughs> send you quarrels. Eh? 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 Hi, right, guy. Right, no problem, I'll man. see you later yeah, now. See you eh? Take care, take care. Yay, what's going on, girls? Well, Friday night. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's life, man. Yeah. All right, I'm just finishing my makeup. Okay, see you. Bye. You're right, Radhika. Yeah, I'm fine. You don't look happy. Friday today, you know. Friday. I'm okay. Do you want to come with me tonight? No. There's a new club that's just open, you know. No, you know I don't. Need come that. on. You don't do clubs, but just just once. No, well, I won't force you. It's your own business. Just go and get my perfume. Yes, what is it? I need to tell you about Jesus one more time. Jesus? When I'm going out? Shall we talk about this when I come back? Okay. But I still need to see my tutor for tutorial. Okay. My mom is around, you know. Right. Where did she come? Uh, she came in. She, yeah, she came in yesterday. Yesterday evening. I tried calling your phones, but no response. I'm so sorry. My phone was on silent. Um, so is she at your house? Uh, no, she's in, she's in a hotel in town. Do I have to see her? Or when do I go see her? Um. Um, you see, that's the thing I, I wanted to tell you about. My mom can be a bit, mm, you know, she can be a bit unfriendly at times, but, um, you know, let's just give it time. Right, that's okay. That's fine. Come on! When you are enjoying the good things of life, live it like a king when you are not a king. Having all the good things to yourself, you didn't know it comes with a price. <laughs>
when you were having the good things of life, when you had the houses, the riches and the wealth, we will allow you to struggle and even will allow you to be successful to a bit. But when you are about to get there, we'll cut you down. <laughs> Eat now! Come on, Jimmy! You won't make it. You won't reach it, but you will struggle. You will be nearly there, but never be there. <laughs> Did you see? He's sitting. And what are you doing? Come on, come on, come on, come on. meet my girlfriend and um, I believe you've met Steve as my flatmate. But Jimmy, you didn't tell me that you have a girlfriend. Mom, was I always told you everything? So, girlfriend, what's your name? Mom, she has a name. Her name is Radike. And please don't start anything right now. I've been told to rest, so please let me just rest. What do you mean, Jimmy? I cannot ask your girlfriend what her name is anymore. Okay. Ray, baby. You have to be quick. Grandma will send you here. Don't worry, honey. Don't make my heart to please. I know. She's so, such a lovely woman. I can't wait to see her. I can't wait to see her as well. I think they are here. I can hear the sound of the car. Wow. They are here. <laughs> wow. How are you?
Oh really? Yeah. Is it coming here? Yeah, it should be any minute. Um, Sister Carol sends her greeting. They all prayed for you while you're at the hospital. Mm. I thank God for those people. And I thank God for you too. Thank God. Yeah. I was really scared when I saw you at the hospital. I was scared as well. But, well, thank God I'm fine now. Yeah. Um, Jimmy, yeah. I don't really know how to say this. I'm scared of your mom. Do you think she likes me? Mm -hmm. I knew you were going to say this. My mom is a nice person, you know. All those are acts of um, years of hurt and loneliness she experienced with my dad. But just give her time. She'll warm up to you nicely. Are you sure? Because I don't like when people will start to put me. Don't worry, don't worry. She'll be fine with you. Alright, if you say so. <laughs> By the way, how's Grandma? Grandma is fine. Doing well. Uh, hope the weather is not too harsh for her. No, no. Today is not her first time anyway. This wasn't just this good last time she came. Yeah. Um, so has your mom agreed to come with you to see my grandma? Um, not yet. Um, she travelled to Birmingham to meet with some of her business partners. But uh, as soon as she gets back, we'll both come together. Mm, that should be brawler. Oh. Is it that open? Yeah, it's open. Come in! Ah! How are you? Brawler. Okay, You're welcome. Okay. How are you? You're welcome. So, Jimmy, how do you do now? Oh, been all right. oh, you have to give me a call. Yeah. Okay, my guys are appearing right. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, so. How is your head now? Yeah, I'm very fine, thank you. Right. And um, I want to appreciate you for all the prayers you, you, you said on my behalf. Thank you very much. You don't have to do that. We are brothers. Thank you very much. So that is your husband. Yes, Mama. He looks good. Uh, but I hope you love him enough to be able to spend the rest of your life with him. Mm. Are you sure? Mm, I think so. No, no, no. I'm not going to take that. That is not a good answer. If you have brought him to us here, you must be very sure. Because the person you are going to spend the rest of your life with must be the person that you love and you, you are so sure, sure of it. Okay, Grandma. I'm sure. Say you started. Yeah. I'm only doing my duty. Because I have to put you, you know, on the right track so that you will not miss your way. Where is he from? Um, I think it's from Mickey Mouse, so yeah. Okay. Okay. You children of nowadays. You don't even know where he's from, and you have brought him to us. <sighs> I will ask him myself. Ask you, uh -huh. Jimmy. Uh, yes, ma. How are you? I'm fine, ma. You said you want to marry my daughter. Yes, ma. Is that so? Yes, ma. It's a good thing. Uh, I hope you won't mind. Because I have to ask you some questions, if you don't mind. No, no problem, ma. Thank you. Uh, where are you from originally? I mean, your parents. Okay, my father is from Ikeru. Yes, ma. Ikeru in Oshun State. While my mom is from Ijebode. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Mommy is also from Ikeru. Oh, really? Did you just say Ikiru? Yes, ma. Ikiru? Yes, ma. Ah. <laughs> ah, ah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which compound? Um, from Alibi Oshu's compound. My father's name is Alegbe Omorioye.
you are Egbe Yemi's grandson. Yes, ma, that's my grandfather's name. Egbe Yemi's son wants to marry my own daughter. Egbe Yemi. Egbe Yemi's son marry my own daughter. It can never happen. Never. It can. Egbe Yemi's son marry my own daughter. Ah, uh ah, -uh, mommy. What is all that about? Who is this Egbe Yemi, by the way? And what is he to you? I am not going to say anything again to anybody. All I know is Egbe Yemi's son is not marrying my daughter. Egbe Yemi's son. <laughs> Egbe Yemi son marry my own daughter. Egbe Yemi. Mami. Mami. It, it is not going to happen. It is not happening. Mami. As Egbe Yemi son. Egbe Yemi son marry my own daughter. Ajike opo, omo opo mu le ro moja le kon. Opo ro sho, opo baja. Opo kon du 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 la be a sho. Ma bi no. I am sorry. You know I won't want to hurt you deliberately. I don't mean to hurt you. But you cannot marry that boy. You can't. You can't marry that boy. Adike. It's a very long story. And by the time you hear the story, you will agree with me that you should not marry into that family. Because their forefathers planted an evil tree and everybody in that family must eat out of the evil fruit that was planted. Hmm. What are you I don't just want to tell you this story because I want to say it, but I have to tell you this story because it is important for me to tell you this story. So that you will know that I do not hate the boy you have brought home. I like him. But he's from a cost lineage. He's from a cost lineage. And I don't want your children to suffer. That's why I say you cannot marry him. You see, Jimmy's great grandfather, Jogumi, he was a very powerful man. Very, very powerful. The 24 spirits 
controlling our village then were at his beck and call. Mm -hmm. He could tell them to do anything and they would do it. He could tell them to go and kill somebody, they would go and kill the person. He could tell them to go and take carry somebody, they tripled to carry the person. Even himself, we were told that the spirits carried him away for 21 days. Mm -hmm. He didn't come back. Nobody saw him for 21 days. And after 21 days, he came back. And he was still in the village. That was how powerful Jogumi was. Because of his power, and he even had money. Mm -hmm. So because of his power, and because of his money, his son, Egbe Yemi, became so spoiled that by the time he was 20 years old, he had already had three wives. Three wives? I am telling you, Radical. Three wives. Imagine. I did not even know that he had developed interest in me. Hmm. He then proposed to me. He said he wanted to marry me. Of course I said no. What future did I have with somebody who had already had, uh, having three wives at the age of 20? I said no. And one day, I was just going to fetch water. than I was then. He grabbed me. He forced me. And he had his way with me. He took away my virginity without my consent. Denied me of my dignity, of my honor. Ah. That was so terrible, but those words didn't mean anything, did they? Ah. They meant everything. Because those words were said 
in agony and with so much pain that I believe the, the gods of the land sanctioned it immediately because few days after a strange illness just struck him by me and he died he died he died but grandma you should have forgiven him by now can't you forgive him ah. i have forgiven all kinds of offenses people have done bad things to me but this one <laughs> I don't know how to forgive it. I don't know how to forgive a man that took away my pride. He turned me to a loose okay. And you know in those days, virginity was the pride of every, every woman. We we reserved it for our future husband. Hmm. Hey, but denied me. Oh, Grandma, you're born again. You taught me about Christ from when I was little. You taught me the importance of forgiveness. You should be able to forgive, Grandma. I have forgiven so many people. Many people have wronged me. But this one, I don't know how to forgive it. It is difficult for me. The wound is still fresh and painful. I don't know how to forgive this one, Grandma. I know you cannot read. But I'm sure you know this Bible passage, the one we recite every day, our yeah. Lord's prayer, you know, our Father who art in heaven, you know the bit where it says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Oh. Grandma, even in this oh. year old age, if you do not forgive those that have sinned against you, God will not forgive you. You would not allow this to go. You have to forgive him, Grandma. You have to let this go. You have to release him from the prison of your heart. Mama, let this go. Has got to help you. Grandma, you have to release him. I forgive you in Jesus' name. <laughs> what she said and she just left the room and uh, she later explained the whole story to Radhika yes she did mm. um she mentioned something about my grandfather being being an evil person you know something that conspired between her and my grandfather but this uh, this is something that happened many many years ago way before I was born. You know, it's, it's only recently that I understood the dreams I was having, that I've been having for the past 15 years of my life. You know, so, but what I don't get is, why am I being punished for the things my grandfather did? I mean, it's not my fault. So, I, I don't understand it, Pastor. I really don't. I know. It's not fair, is it? Let me show you something from the scriptures. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 9. Here, yeah, this is God speaking. It says, You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, 
visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. That was God. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say God is the one punishing you. But if God, our faithful, righteous, loving Father, could say a thing like this, you just imagine what the devil, the enemy of mankind, will do to those that get in his net. It will be terrible. But Pastor, Jimmy is a born again, and such should not apply to him. After all, the Bible says, if a man be in Christ, is a new creature. So, curses and covenants of the fathers should not apply to him. They shouldn't. Well, you're right. You're right to say, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. That's absolutely correct. The war of salvation does to a man is that it gives you a provisional place with Christ. It entitles you a position to sit with Christ far above principalities and powers. But some believers have some things to settle. For instance, as a non-believer, you took something that does not belong to you. And when you gave your life to Christ, you returned it back to the owner. That is an act of genuine repentance. It's called restitution. Also, you made promise to someone. You are expected to keep the promise. Why? Because God, our God, is a covenant-keeping God. When he says a thing, he stands by it. And he's expecting the same thing from us as children. Now this is the tricky bit. As a child of God, you have no business with the devil. The promise you made with the devil, you can no longer keep that. Because you are now on the other side. But that promise has to be broken. You have to be delivered. Either the one you made by yourself or the one made on your behalf has to be broken. You need to be delivered. Mm, so, how do we get delivered? Um, getting delivered is pretty easy, you know, simple because Jesus Christ already delivered us. When he went to the cross of Calvary, he took care of that. But what we need to do is to claim the deliverance. So, how do I claim it? Right. How do you claim it? Uh, there are a couple of ways you can do that. But let me show you what uh, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 17. It is, how be it, this kind does not go out except by fasting and praying. So you need to pray and to fast, you know, in order to get delivered. And I can assure you that your deliverance is certain because Jesus Christ has taken care of it. Okay, so are we going to see the pastors or how do we go about it? Uh, good question that. You might need the support of the pastor to do it because... Um, but deliverance from the power of darkness does not necessarily mean that you need a third party to do it. You can do it yourself. But uh, it depends on your knowledge as a child of God and the level of the anointing of God upon your life because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Um, I, I think I would like to start immediately. Yeah, why not? could do that. Um, I will um, get in touch with the pastor in charge of the deliverance team. I can do that after you've gone. 
Right. I'll get in touch with him and um, I'm sure he will arrange something with you and you can start immediately. So after the whole deliverance, when Jimmy is now free, we can continue with the marriage plan. Because I know you guys, yeah. you're getting impatient, is that not? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be patient. You need to be patient. Um, I brought this book, you know, to borrow you. Radhika, you read it first. Then you pass it to Jimmy after you finish with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, your word says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus said the Lord, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contends with thee, and I will save thy children, and I will Feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood. A sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer. I have every right to buy your life. You made a covenant out with me, remember? That gives me every right over you. I do not agree with that. The word of the Lord says, Shall the prey of the mighty be taken away? Shall the lawful captives be delivered? But thus says the Lord that even the prey of the mighty shall be taken away and the captives of the terrible shall be delivered and he will contend against those that contend against me <laughs> and he shall save my children so listen i have no business with you i did not enter into an agreement with you he did don't care about that what i care about is the covenant that i have with you and for me, covenant is covenant. I own you. You share his blood. You are of his lineage. And you enjoy everything he has. I do not agree with that. I am of a different order. I belong to the lineage of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Listen, when I gave my life to Christ, I became a new person. I entered into a totally different agreement. The new covenant, the one that's made by the blood of the Lamb, the righteous Son of God. <laughs> he enjoyed those riches. He enjoyed the wealth, the fame, and everything that comes with it. He mortgaged your future for his own enjoyment. And I own you because I have a covenant with you. <laughs> His word says about me, it shall never be mentioned again that the fathers ate the sour grapes and the teeth of the children are set on edge. <clears throat> he is my redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. No! You shall not be set free. I own you! 
Because of the covenant, there's no enchantment against Israel. No divination against the house of Jacob. I break every covenant. Enter into on my behalf in the name of Jesus. It's what says the cost is he who hangs with you. Do you not know that my Lord hung on a tree of Calvary? He became a cause on my behalf to set me free from all the entanglements of the power of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I am free in the name of Jesus. You can now concentrate on your studies now that the marriage plans is on the way. I don't know, I don't know how my dad is going to take all this marriage thing. Um, I spoke with my mom, and she said she's fine with it as long as you guys are okay with it. That shouldn't be a problem, at least mama is here. She can always talk to your dad on the other hand. Mm. Mm. I think God actually arranged that because he listens to mama more than anyone else. I know. Then you and Jimmy can now do everything together. Stop it, Antiru. <laughs> Don't mind me. So, Jimmy, thank God you are all right now. Yeah, thank God. Thank you very much, sir. And um, I really want to appreciate all your efforts during that time as well. That's all right. I know you are a Christian, but you really need to devote more time to God and the things of God. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I will. I surely will. Devoting time to the, thing, to the Word of God and spending more time in prayer helps a Christian to know more about God. That's very true, sir. You know, when you spend quality time with your father, it makes you to recognize his voice. For example, you know how Radhika talks because you are in love with her and you are familiar with the way she talks. So even if she tries to disguise her voice on the phone you will still know that is how it is with god spend more time with him oh, what what kind of what um, you've ruined my dress with oh. oh, my what's, what's expensive the clothes and even that wristwatch what's, what, what's so Ha, <laughs> 
I am very worried about my daughter, you know. Are you sure you will be able to take good care of her? Me? Take care of your daughter? Jimmy will do that. It's not my call. As long as she behaves herself around me, I think we'll be fine. Hmm. There should not be any problem about that. Because she's a blessed child of God. And uh, she's well behaved. That's great then. But talking about uh, being a child of God, are you born again? Born again? <laughs> what is that? No, <laughs> I'm not born again. Those people, all they know is to take money off people. They're all liars. No wonder the Bible says it will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Why are you handling money as if you came to this world with money? You are not going to die with money. You can't take it away with you. If you die today, that is the end of it. Are you trying to be insulting or what? No. No, no, no. So what's all this supposed to mean? I am just telling you. You are a frustrated woman, you know. I'm not. You are. And you derive your happiness by inflicting pain on others. No, I don't. That is who you are. And the only way you can get out of this is by giving your life to Jesus Christ. I know you must have experienced different things in life that brought you to this point. But you must come to terms with giving your life to Jesus Christ. You know, just listening to you, you fascinate me. An old woman like you preaching about Jesus. Very, very interesting. But I don't really need Jesus. I've got all that I want. So I don't need Jesus. You think so? You don't have everything. You don't have everything. There is still a lot that you need. And it's only Jesus Christ that can give you that thing that you need. <laughs> You know what you should do? The weight you have been carrying upon your shoulders, shed it off. And you can't shed it off by yourself. Just like how he helped me. There was a weight I was carrying for over 50 years. He just helped me to shed it off. He took it off me. He took it off me. You have to come to terms with accepting him as your Lord and Savior and he will come into your heart and your life will become fresh. You will be, he will beautify your life. My life is beautiful. I don't think so. It's not. It's not. Your life is not beautiful until you give your life to Jesus Christ and allow him to beautify your life. That is when you understand true beauty. I'll give it a go sometime. So, you know what? I am not going to force you to do anything. I'm just suggesting that tomorrow may be too late. What if tomorrow doesn't come? What if you die today? Are you suggesting I'm going to die now? I didn't say that. But I have seen young people die. I have seen old people die. I have seen people who are not my age, they have died. People who are older than me, they have died. I have seen all kinds of people. Death has nothing to do with age. And what I will just tell you today is that whatever you do, whether you live or you die, don't do it without Christ in your life. That is just what I'm trying to tell you. I guess I can give it a go then. Do you want me to pray with you? All right then, yes. <laughs>
it and all you need to do now is to allow God to continue to work in you. You look for a Bible believing church, start attending and you begin to go. Right. Um thank you very much. While I'm here in the UK, I'll go along to Jimmy's church. But when I get back to Nigeria I'll make it a project. I'll look for a good place to go and you will see your life transformed and translated. It is a joyful life in Christ. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, okay, what are you doing here? I work here now, man. You do? Yes. You work here? Yes, yes. Congratulations. You didn't tell me you got a job? Um, it's my first day. It's my first day. Congratulations. That's a Thank good you. one. Thank you. Wow. Praise God. Wow. This is good. Oh. How is Radhika? Oh, she's fine. She's, she's good. She's doing great. Okay. Uh, that's so good, huh? Congrats once again. Thank you. <laughs> um, have you guys got a meeting with me this week? Um, yes, we do. On Friday. By 6. Friday by 6. Okay. I look forward to seeing you then. Okay. Thank see you. you. Take right, care. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye.